Hello everybody, it's Brian in uh, Toronto. And finally, I'm going to get to this one decade, one record vinyl challenge, which was started by Jason at Spins Vinyl. That's a new channel to me. I don't think I've encountered it before, but I have gone over and watched the originating video and clicked the subscribe button, and you should too. So I was tagged twice that I know of for this challenge. I was tagged by Randall Nelson, Thank you, Randy, for thinking of me. He uh, gave a brief explanation as, as to why he thought I would be good for this challenge, which, which is great. I was also tagged by Mike Vinyl Spiral. Now, in his tag, he came up with what he called an international affair in which he tagged Mike PC31, the Vinyl Policeman, as the representative for Europe. He tagged Ben Rankins as the representative for Australasia, and he tagged me as representative for North America, thinking that we would um, all create or create videos in which we chose some really awesome records. So I think he said the weight of the entire continent was resting on my shoulders, which is pretty nerve-wracking and a lot of responsibility. Um, so I did make a list of the 50s through to the present, one record for decade, but after watching Ben Rankin's channel in which he Australianizes everything. I thought that I would take a little different tack and Canadianize this because I don't know if anyone else will do that. So instead of just random records from wherever they're they're from, I decided to choose only Canadian artists or Canadian bands. So um, I do have the list of the other ones I chose. Maybe I'll maybe I'll make a video of that some other time. But so here we go. The only problem is that I couldn't find a record from the 50s in my collection for Canada because I I can't even think of one off the top of my head so I don't have anything for that so I'm gonna start with the 60s and when you see this record you're gonna go of course you're gonna groan and say not that guy again but really I had no choice thinking of Canadian records from the 60s this is the only one that I think should be should be with me on a desert island or with me forever and that's the debut record from Leonard Cohen the songs of Leonard Cohen, this came out in very late 1967. And of course, this has uh, the classic songs you know from Leonard Cohen, uh, Suzanne, Hey, That's No Way to Say Goodbye, uh, So Long, Marianne. But it also has some really good deep cuts that maybe don't get as much attention, like The Stranger Song, Teachers, One of Us Could Not Be Wrong, Stories of the Street. And to my mind, this is the best, the finest debut record out of Canada ever and I'll stand behind that <laughs> so this is great um, yeah Leonard Cohen sorry about that I was gonna choose a Leonard Cohen record for every decade but I I thought twice about that <laughs> so for the 70s again one that may be a little obvious and it only came out three years after the first record so we're in 1970 exactly 1970 and yeah maybe a little obvious but for me, this is a, a classic record and one that I would like to have with me if I was on like a desert island or something. And that's Neil Young's After the Gold Rush. Of course, some people will have chosen Harvest as their favorite record. For me, this one edges Harvest out just by a little bit. This might be my favorite Neil Young record. It's my original Canadian. Well, I don't know if it's original. It's uh, I can't remember the date on this. But, of course, this has Southern Man and After the Gold Rush, the title track, Only Love Can Break Your Heart. A really, really strong record and possibly my favorite one, as I just said. So, I, again, maybe a bit obvious, but I'm sticking with this one for the 70s. Now, for the 80s, that's always a challenging decade because of what happened to music in the 80s. But I thought about this for a while, and there's really only one record I could choose for uh, from the 80s out of Canada and it's the band's, in my opinion, the band's best record, their high watermark and certainly a fantastic record and that is Rush Moving Pictures. So of course this record features a double entendre of these movers actually moving pictures but the title is called Moving Pictures which is reference to, to film I suppose. That's a pretty cool idea. By the way I did a video, uh, a, res a thread response a little while ago in which I showed album covers of places I've been to and of course I showed this record so if you want to know what that's all about you can go check that out many of you will many will already know that uh, especially if you live in Toronto you know where this is there's the back but I mean Tom Sawyer Red Barchetta YYZ Limelight 
the Camera Eye, Witch Hunt, Vital Signs. This is a, a brilliant record from start to finish. The best brush record and has the Camera Eye, which is the best track on this record. So 1981, really for me, there's no other choice for the 80s for Canada, except maybe a Leonard Cohen record. All right, for the 90s, um, again, uh, lots of choices to be made, but I decided to go with a, an old, well, not old, well, he is old now, he's like 78, but um, a Canadian folky. At least he started in the folk realm and ended up still in that area, but has made excursions into sort of world music kind of sounds almost, um, some more electric sounds with the electric guitar, but this is a, an artist called Bruce Coburn, and if Gary from Physical Format Rock and Roll is watching, Gary, I just want to remind you of the pronunciation, C-O-C-K-B-U-R-N, Coburn, <laughs> just so you get that right. I know you struggle with that. This is his record from 1996 called The Charity of Night. It's a double record. And, um, you know, not to give any spoilers, I might do a, maybe I'll do a ranking of Bruce Coburn records at some point, or a video about Bruce Coburn, because he's released in the neighborhood of 30 records, and this one would definitely be in the top five for sure. I think it's a really good record. It contains my favorite Bruce Coburn song, which is the last track on side D, which I think is really exceptional. And uh, yeah, this one um, got good reviews, criti critically acclaimed, and um, I'm choosing that for the 90s. For the 2000s, I went with a Canadian, I've mentioned this band before, an indie rock collective, and that's Broken Social Scene. You Forgot It in People. This came out in 2002, but this is the 20th anniversary RSD release from 2022. This is also a double record, and I've mentioned this band before, as I just said, but it has a lot of Canadian musicians associated with it. The main members of the band, but also some people you may have heard of, like Feist and Emily Haynes, are often a part of this band. It comes with this little poster, and it's on two pieces of vinyl, and the record itself is pressed on this blue colored vinyl. And I think this is a really good record. It probably is my favorite Broken Social Scene record. Uh, highlights for me are Casey Accidental, Almost Crimes, I think is a fantastic song. Lover's Spit, this is a, a really great record. Now we move into the 2010s. And again, challenging, there's a lot of things to choose. And I ended up going with this record from Arcade Fire called The Suburbs, which I think is outstanding. They won a kind of, I think you would say, a surprise Grammy Award for this record. Now, of course, I say they are Canadian band, although the lead guy is actually American. But that's let's leave that aside. They're based in Montreal, I believe. And um, this is a bit of a departure from the previous record, but I think this is a really strong record. I actually love this record. It's a double record. And um, yeah, that's the one I would stick with for the years 2000s, now, or 2010s. Now, for 2020s, we're only a couple years in, two and a half years in, but I did make a choice for that, and I know that, you know, obviously in a few years I might change my mind, but I decided to choose the record that I think I've been playing the most from the 2020s, uh, and that is this one from Sloan called Sloan Steady. Now, I mentioned this record in a recent Finds video not too long ago. Um, but this, I think, you know, it's amazing to me that Sloan has been so consistent. This record is equal to anything they've done in the past, and I think it's uh, a really great record. If you want to get a sense of this record, just listen to the first track, Magical Thinking, on, on YouTube, and I think you'll agree that it's a, a pretty strong track. And it's pressed on this purple vinyl. Right, so now the second part of this is to tag three channels. And because I waited, I think, uh, about two weeks to get to this, the uh, channels that are available to be tagged have dwindled because I think most of the people who I think would do this tag have already done it, or thread have already done it. And every time I think of someone, I'd say, oh, that would be a good person to tag. It's already They've already finished the video. So I'm not sure who's left. And... So I'm just going to say this. If you want to do this uh, thread, 
consider yourself tagged <laughs> because I can't think of any other way to do it because so many people have already taken part. I guess that's the problem with taking your time to get to these things. But I'd like to know, uh, yeah, if you're a Canadian music fan, what do you think of those? But um, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you uh, next time.